Okay, closed captioning should be enabled now. It is. Yes, yes it okay. is. Well, it says it's available. It doesn't, it's not typing anything. It is here for me. Okay, okay. All right, just starting recording up here on my end. Okay. One second here. Okay, I didn't mean to do that at the end. Let's get back here. Okay, our presentation tonight is going to be on electric predator guards. Our presenter will be Brad Biddle. He is a very experienced uh, Martin landlord from Alabama. Uh, your host tonight is Purple Martin Fanatics and the North Carolina Purple Martin Society. I'm going to talk a little bit about both groups and then I'm going to let Brad take it away. So about the uh, North Carolina Purple Martin Society or NCPMS for short, the North Carolina Purple Martin Society is a nonprofit, all volunteer conservation organization run solely on public donations and annual contributions. The mission of the North Carolina Purple Martin Society shall be dedicated to the preservation of the Purple Martin species through hands on conservation projects, public education, and scientific research to encourage responsible colony management, to establish new public colony sites, and maintain existing public colony sites to recruit new Purple Martin enthusiasts and to work with other like-minded conservation groups for the benefit of this human dependent species. We are an emerging 501c3. NCPMS currently manages two public colonies in Wake County with plans to expand and our members also manage several colonies on private lands across the state. Donations are used to help pay for educational and outreach events, new public sites and maintenance of the established public sites so that everyone may enjoy the Martins. We also have planned scientific research goals. We welcome members from across the state. Purple Martin Fanatics is a group on Facebook. This group is dedicated to helping Purple Martin landlords of all experience levels learn how to be more successful in a fun and educational environment. Our goal is to bring together new aspiring landlords with experienced mentors on this site that can not only help their colonies succeed, but also to thrive. And Kathy Lane wanted to talk briefly about uh, Purple Martin Field Day. I'm gonna stop sharing this for one second and pull up hers and then we'll get started. One moment. Here. Okay, Kathy Lane. Yes. Um, I just want to let everybody know about this Purple Martin Field Day coming up on June 26th in Louisa County, which is Central Virginia. If anybody's able to come, uh, Lance Wood um, at this site has uh, over 100 pairs of Purple Martins nesting at his site every year. And um, we teach people how to attract Martins, how to establish a colony, how to grow your colony, um, uh, how to uh, protect from climbing predators, aerial predators, hawks and owls. Um, I know some of you guys have more experience at those uh, subjects than uh, I do, but uh, I know you all, some of you have had really bad problems with owls, but uh, uh, just wanna share what we know and uh, learn from each other. But we have a great time. Um, and so I'll post the link in the uh, chat in a second, but I uh, hope everybody can, uh, Come, or if you know anybody in Virginia that uh, you think might want to come, uh, feel free to uh, invite them, let them know about it. And uh, we'd love to see any of you. We've had people come from Louisiana before. So uh, we have a good time together and uh, would love to love to see any of you guys that are able to make it. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. One moment. Hey, Daryl. Yeah. Would you mind muting your mic? Oh, yeah. How do I do that? Oh, just click mute? Yeah. 
the Martins are, are pretty loud. <laughs> that's that's sorry, not a bad buddy. problem. But this is my first time. So, I'm sorry. I'm, I got you. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, so that's a good reminder. I will ask everyone except the presenter to please uh, mute themselves if you're able to do that. If you need help, let us know. All right, Brad, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You want me to, oh, what you want me to, you want me to just start talking? Just start talking. Okay, uh, the Cyclops Brute is the electric fence charger that we use here on our farm. Uh, we have a cattle farm, so my, my predator guards are multi-purpose. They keep cattle contained and they also keep snakes and raccoons and feral cats off of my gourd racks. Uh, you can see that it has a stored energy of 10 joules and an output energy of eight joules. Um, Courtney has a smaller one uh, because she doesn't need that big and it's uh, a 30 mile. Most fence chargers are rated in the miles that they, they will uh, energize. And for instance, if you have a 40 acre field that you have one strand of wire around then you have one mile of electric fence. If you have five strands around that field you have five miles of electric fence. It doesn't, each wire that's energized takes up part of that, uh, takes up part of that distance. Um, people ask me often what size charger they need for their Purple Martin Gord Rack. I don't have an answer to that question. I have contacted one of the largest manufacturers of fence chargers for input on that. I did that last year. And surprisingly enough, they couldn't tell me how, how strong it had to be to shock a snake. That was, I think, the first time that anyone had ever asked them that. So um, uh, I always suggest that people get a fence charger rated for cattle, not for, not for the pets. So, uh, Whatever the most you can afford is, you can't get too big. So, um, uh, anything else on that slide? I kind of don't like everybody being muted because I can't ask questions. Well, the only thing I would add is um, consider um, protecting the electrical outlet where it's plugged yes. in. Yes, yes, that needs to be done. Uh, exterior outlet and protected in some way. Ours is inside a barn, so uh, obviously it's protected. Uh, you can see on the on the Cyclops charger, it says plainly down at the bottom, three ground rods required. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever driven a ground rod into the soil. They're eight feet long and it can take hours to drive them. We have one ground rod on ours it never it's never failed uh, we have a we have highly mineralized soil here most people do unless you have a very sandy white sand soil you should have enough minerals in the soil to conduct electricity and that's all you're that's all you're looking for um, there are other options you can also run a two wire system where one wire is energized and one wire is the ground. So in a situation like that, the <clears throat> predator would have to touch both wires at the same time to, for the circuit to be completed. This shows you uh, the daisy chain system for connecting three ground rods. It shows uh, the hot wire lead, lead out wire, as it's called here, going out to the fence. Uh, it shows how the, the electricity is conducted back to the fence charger. The cow touches the fence, the electricity flows through her into the ground and goes back to the ground rod, which carries it back to the electric fence. Uh, to shock something, you have to complete the circuit, meaning that it has to return back to the source. And electric fences use the earth to do that. Uh, they work great 99.9% .9 of the time, only in severe drought conditions do they suffer with 
conductivity of the soil. So Brad, if anybody's not familiar with this, how close should the ground rod be to, let's say, the, a, a rack or the source of electricity? Um, it, the closer, the better, but it really doesn't matter. Um, I am, at my gourd racks, I am about 400 yards from the barn, and it's instantaneous shock. Um, you know, we have fence that's a half a mile from the barn, and it's still an instantaneous shock. Uh, as long as you have good conductivity in the soil, uh, then the distance is not very crucial. If you're going to have a standalone unit for your purple martin rack, you know, you're probably going to be within 100 feet of the rack with your charger. You're going to be great with that. Um, should not be any issues at all. Okay, next slide, I guess. Okay, this is one of my latest additions to the uh, Predator Guard that I use. I, I have some that I wouldn't post a picture of, some of my first ones, and then this is the one that I, I really like. It's obviously on a round pole, uh, as you can see, and I use two layers of PVC pipe Actually, it's a gray PVC conduit because it has UV inhibitors in the, uh, in the PVC. Uh, <clears throat> that, is a uh -oh. that is a two inch schedule 40 steel pipe, which means it has an outside diameter of two and three eighths inches. Okay, the first layer of PVC conduit is two and a half inch ID. So it fits pretty snugly around the pole. I split it in half lengthwise, uh, I used electrical tape to hold it in position until I put the outside piece on. The outside piece is three inch ID uh, conduit and I split it lengthwise as well. Um, you can see, and I'm, I'm bad about pointing at the pictures and I know you can't see what I'm pointing at, but if you look at about four o'clock on the outside piece of conduit, uh, the you can see a split in the top of the pipe. Courtney, if you might move the mouse down there. There you go. Okay, that's the seam in that one. And the seam on the inner pipe, it's very hard to see, but it's right under the, the nut on the bolt that holds the winch on. So I have those somewhere in that general, general area, yes. I have those counter-rotated by 90 degrees, which keeps the electricity from shooting the gap between the two pieces of pipe. And uh, Courtney mentioned that she has, hers does that, and she uses a single layer of uh, PVC conduit. And uh, I think she said that might be an off season project for her. But uh, the two layers of pipe, I, I have zero grounding issues with that. Um, Okay, I got that one covered. Brad, how tall, Brad? Yes. How tall are those PVC pipes? Uh, those particular ones on that, that rack with the gray, the one with the round gray pipe, it is uh, yeah. 26 inches tall. And, there's and that's a, there's, tall there's, enough there's, to keep out this? No, no, it's not. Tall enough a, to keep out the snakes? No. I th yes, I think no. it actually is tall enough to keep out snakes, but I don't think it's tall enough to keep out raccoons. And there's a picture later in the presentation where you can see, if you see coming out of the top of that guard, there's a section of black wire. I'm pointing Insulated. Out. Yes, that, that rack has another section of predator guard above the winch that if something jumped up on the winch, like a raccoon or a cat, it would get shocked above the winch. So, okay. All right. Thank and you. Then, you're welcome. Okay, this, this is my uh, square poles. I have two that I added last year. Those are four inch square aluminum poles. And I had to get kind of creative to make an insulator for those. 
An insulator, for those of you who might not know, that is a non-conductive material that isolates the electric wire from the metal pole. You can't, you can't just wrap metal wire around your pole because it would just ground out. Uh, so to make those insulators, I uh, use PVC, PVC trim board from a home, home improvement store and I cut it down on a table saw and glued it together with PVC cement. It, it's just like PVC pipe, you can glue it, glue it together. So I made four corner insulators and uh, attached them with those stainless steel hose clamps and then wound the wire up and back down to make the predator guard. Anything else on that slide, Ms. Russo? I don't think so, unless you want to explain to them what that black wire is coming out of the bottom there. Okay, the black wire coming out of the bottom is a double insulated direct berry uh, electric fence wire. It's used to, normally used to go under gates in a fence uh, or to go from the fence charger to the, which would be at a barn to the fence. Uh, you do not have to put it in conduit. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive as well compared to copper wire, but I will I will warn you that occasionally you get a break underground and have to replace it. So if you're if you're gonna do it, you might want to put it in conduit, especially if you've got a hundred foot run from your your shop, your garage, whatever, to your gourd rack. Uh, that, that those particular racks, that's one of the four that's in my backyard. There's a pasture fence eight feet from those racks. So I only have to go eight feet of buried wire to get from the electric fence on our cattle fence to my, my guards on my Purple Martin poles. There's a better picture of the hose clamp set up. Um, I use those hose clamps for two purposes to hold the insulators to the pole and also to tie the wire, the electric fence wire, to uh, just wrap it around it a couple of times, twist it on itself. Then I spiral down the pole, tie it to the one at the bottom, and then I spiral back up the pole and tie it again back to the top one. And that makes a good uh, guard that, uh, other than one, one instance last year, and I've started using those my second year. I've never had a breach. So for folks who might not know, can you tell them what kind of wire that is specifically that's wrapped around that pole? It's a galvanized electric fence wire. It's, it's very common at Tractor Supply or any, any farming store. It's a, it's a small gauge. It's uh, probably 18, 18 gauge. It's, it's very strong as long as you don't kink it. Uh, I don't know if kink is a word in, in North Carolina where you, where you bend the wire too far and it, it breaks, but as long as you don't do anything crazy with it, it works really well. All right. Now those guards, uh, different than the one on the round pole, those are 32 inches tall and I've never had a breach on those. So those do not have, uh, on the, the, the racks in my backyard are all, the winches are 32 inches off the ground. Two of them have been here since uh, about 2005-ish, six-ish, something like that, four, maybe, I don't know. But I've, I've never had a snake, cat, raccoon, Rocky the squirrel, bullwinkle, nobody's ever gotten past them, so. I'm pretty confident that they work, with one exception that I'll talk about later. That is the wire that I use. Uh, you can get that in different lengths. You'll notice that that's 200 foot roll. Uh, you might not need, they, they sell it in multiple different length rolls. I think 25 feet being the shortest one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that wire cannot be spliced going underground, even if you put it in conduit, uh, you have to use one continuous piece. So, you know, if somebody gets ready to put one in, 
you can't if you got to go 40 feet you can't buy two 25 foot rolls because it will ground out underground when the pipe gets water in it and it will get water in it it's just a matter of time there is a very simple and crude ditch from the pole to the fence it's about four inches deep i just get it deep enough that i won't run over it with a lawnmower uh, Obviously, I can't run my tiller back there. That's on the edge of my garden, but I can't run my tiller back there. But that's really all it takes. Uh, I think the next picture shows the wire in the trench. Uh, yes, it shows the wire in the trench. I put a couple of dirt clods on it to hold it down, and I backfill the ditch, and it's finished. Okay, that's where the where the, the energized wire comes out of the ground. I don't know why I'm getting feedback. Are y'all hearing feedback? I heard it briefly, but I don't hear it now. Okay, uh, the energized wire comes out of the ground. It goes up to behind the hose clamp. That just kind of helps hold it in place. That wire is very, very stiff. Uh, I think it's 11 gauge galvanized steel wire. So. You just got to tie the other wire to it. That's all it takes. It doesn't have. You don't need a wire fastener. You don't need a wire nut. You don't need a butt splice. That that's plenty good enough to attach it to your electric guard. And that is how it's attached to the fence. Just very simple, twisty twist. So that's how you power your particular guard. Yes. You just come yes. right off your cattle fence. That's correct. Mm -hmm. No special anything. Just strip about six inches of wire and twist it around. That's a, That shows how, uh, that's actually the one we looked at earlier. That shows how it's attached, comes out of the ground, goes behind the hose clamp. The hose clamp actually holds the wire in place and serves as current, the, the uh, conductor to get it uh, to the to the wire. That is Brad's makeshift always handy uh, tester. I do have a tester with lights on it that light up when it's you know higher voltage or lower voltage, but I use that one every time I go to the gourd racks. I have it hanging on the fence. It's simply about a foot long section of the direct buried wire with a little bit stripped off of each end. And the reason that I use that is because I know that under normal conditions, if a fence is not grounded, that I should be able to make it jump a spark from the hot wire to the pole that's at least a quarter of an inch long. If I stick it up there and I have to get really, really close to the pole to make it arc, then I know that we've got fence issues somewhere. And I actually found that about two weeks ago, I tested it and I almost had to touch the fence to get, or touch the pole to make it arc. So we found a broke insulator, a broken insulator with the, with the wire wrapped around the barbed wire fence. So got that fixed and it's back to its potent self. That's very similar to the tester that I use. It's very, as you can see, it doesn't cost a lot. It, it has no electronics. It simply, the stronger your fence is, the more lights it lights up. Uh, it's good to have a baseline to know what your fence output is. And that way, if you have any issues with it, uh, it will show a reduced output. There is Miss Rousseau's high tech fence charger tester. She can tell you about that. So with this type of fence tester, you, know, you stick part of it in the ground or on whatever wire is supposed to be your ground wire. And then the two prongs at the top is where you stick it to the hot wire and it gives you a digital readout at the top in kilovolts. And in this particular case, it was 15.4 kilovolts coming off of that. There's also an example in this picture of uh, what we like to call a tattletale. It's a uh, 
a light that hangs on the guard that will flash if there's um, no electricity running through the guard or if the voltage is slow, so low that it's reading zero to let you know that you have a problem with your fence. Yes. And that's a good thing to keep the batteries checked in and may not, uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you about the situation. Me not keeping my batteries checked cost me three Martin nests last year. Mm -hmm. um, I watch my Martins every afternoon, see what's going on. And I had done a nest check the previous Saturday and I knew that, well, I had eggs in almost every gourd, but I, particular three gourds, I stopped seeing Martins go to them. And so I just went and let it down and I opened the first one. There were no eggs and there was about a foot long piece of snake skin in the gourd. And I thought, hmm, that's odd. I've never seen Martins use snake skin for nesting material. Didn't dawn on me. So I opened the next one and it also had no eggs and it had piece of snake skin in it too and same for number three so i reached down and touched the electric fence and it was off so i called my dad on a panic i said hey the electric fence is off he said no it's not i said yes that it is i just i just touched it it's not on he said well most of it's on but the part behind your house is not and i said what what he said yeah you had one of your poles was one of your gourd racks was parking the other day so i unhooked the section that went behind your house so we you know we had a little chit chat about that got it hooked back up that evening and to to tell the efficacy of the electric predator guard i lost no more uh nest to snake predation it stopped it cold and for those of you who have heard horror stories about snakes you know that once they uh start going up a gourd rack and getting in the rack that they don't stop um so it works really well because that had to be a five and a half six foot long snake based off the size of its uh, skin that it shed and it never it never went up another pole or that one again so they work really well that shows the upper portion of the guard on that rack at the barn. That winch is, that, that rack is on a little bit of a hillside. So that, that uh, winch is only about 24 inches off the ground. So I didn't feel like that would be high enough to, you know, a cat could easily jump on top of that winch. So uh, I added another about a foot section above that winch and, uh, it, it, it works well. I haven't been shocked by it yet, letting the gourd rack down. I don't turn mine off when I check them. I have been zapped a couple times, but that's just a nice friendly reminder that they're keeping the snakes out of my gourds. <laughs> that's it. That's a full, full picture of it there. If I had known that that gourd rack or that winch and uh, guard was going to be on zoom one day i probably would have taken the electrical tape off after i put the uh, uh the hose clamps on but now you can see that it still has electrical tape on it so remind me again brad how how tall that is uh to the top of that mm -hmm. to the top of that one is probably around 40 inches i let my gourd rack down right to the top of it before I do a nest check. Um, and the, you know, I kind of kind of have to, I don't really have to tiptoe a little bit on the downhill side, I have to tiptoe to see in them a little bit, but um, <clears throat> I'd rather tiptoe than find uh, preyed upon Martins. So minor inconvenience. So, yes. Brad? Yes. I don't have the advantage of a winch. I have a telescopic okay. three-piece pole. Right. So that's going to slide through a triangular pole. Uh -huh. I think yes. that your, your, uh, your telescopic pole being three sections, I'm going to guess that each section is around four to five feet long. Yeah, I'd uh, say five anyways. Okay. You could take, you could figure out whatever size pipe 
will slide directly over that bottom section. I don't know what diameter that that pipe, that triangle pole is, um, but you can slide a, one piece of pipe uncut around pipe right over the right over the uh, my dog's bark. I'm trying to bark. Sorry. Um, you can slide one piece of round PVC right over the top of that. Of course, you'd have to wait until season was after it was over, but uh, or you could cut it in half and do it just like I did. But you should be able to find a size of pipe that will slide over that triangle. It doesn't have to be the same shape as your pole. Um, it would be. It would wonder be if that angular. Wonder if that angular trim might work for me better. It might. Now that trim does not come like that. It's it's actually a flat plank, oh. and you have to cut it and glue it together and and oh. do that with it. So, um, you know they make they make uh, gutter downspouts that are vinyl. You could use that. Uh, you could use, you know, you can use a five gallon bucket. You know, cut it to fit the hole on your pole. Put a hose clamp around your pole. Put the five plastic five gallon bucket on there and wrap it with electrical wire. As long as it's made out of plastic, it's not going to conduct electricity. And that's all that that's all those insulators are for. They're to isolate the electrified wire from your metal pole. Because if you don't, they ground out, your fence is totally ineffective. You can't use wood, but as long as it's any kind of plastic will work. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you have a question, you can unmute yourself or type it in the chat. We prefer if you unmute yourself so everyone can hear you. Or if you'd like me to pull up the pictures again, if you had a question about a particular picture, we can do that also. I was supposed to give you the definition of an amp, a uh, volt, and a joule. Yes. And I, I can do that, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to walk down the steps and get my notes that blew off the deck while I was sitting here. A jewel, <laughs> a jewel is a rating of force. Uh, it's not the same as horsepower, so don't think it's the same as horsepower, but the more jewels your charger is, the more force is applied to the shock. There's also a term called low impedance. That, uh, I can't imagine how that got translated. Uh, it has an effect on shocking through wet weeds or shocking through grass. That I don't think they make a charger that does not have that function. Um, that most of you, if you're just gonna hook it to a purple Martin pole, it's not gonna be touching grass anyway, cause you're gonna keep that sprayed with Roundup around the pole, or you're gonna use your weed eater, whatever. Um, I, regard, I wanna touch a little bit on the safety. People, I, I think a lot of people have a fear of electric fences. I, I've been around an electric fence since I was about six years old. That's when we moved to the farm. I've been shocked thousands of times. And I mean, Look at me, what's wrong with me? That's an open-ended <laughs> question. Don't say it, don't say it. Seriously, uh, electric fences are very safe. They are a low, low amperage, high voltage current. Amps are what kill people, not volts. Now, yes, volts can kill you, but practically speaking, if you grab your, if you stick a fork in your 110 receptacle in your house, that's going to uh, it's going to cause your muscles to contract where you can't let go of the fork. That's not how a electric fence works. Electric fences are a pulsed charge. You can hear it. they have an audible click on the charger. Click, click, click. That click ser ter serves two purposes. If you when you first install if you install one when you first install it listen to the listen to the to the sound 
if you go back in there next week and it's only making about half that much sound, then you've got a grounding issue on your fence. It, it's kind of a, it, it helps you determine if you have issues or not. Now, if you hear a popping at your pole, you have a short, you have a ground. Uh, that's an issue that you need to fix. It shouldn't, it shouldn't uh, make any sounds out at your, uh, out at your gourd rack. But it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's a pulsed charge, so it's safe. Um, it's low amperage, which makes it safe. The only way that you could be permanently injured by an electric fence is if you fell into the fence and simply couldn't get off of it. That, that's really the only way that, that, you could, that you could be injured by one. So, so does anybody? Some, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just going over our notes real quick. Um, so what are some common installation mistakes that, that you see or hear about? Common in installation mistakes is not having it grounded properly. Uh, you, if you have, let's, let's just assume that, that everybody is going to put their charger in their garage. If you're, wherever your power comes into your house, you have a ground rod at your breaker box or at your meter base. Uh, you can hook that to that, uh, the elect I don't know what the National Electric Code says about it, but Brad says you can hook your electric fence to your home's uh, ground rod. Probably would be better to, to use another one, but uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of common mistakes I see are people don't use the correct insulator. They wanna, you know, I have questions every year. Well, can my pole's wood, can I just wrap the electric wire around my wood pole? No, no, you can't. Uh, wood is, wood doesn't conduct electricity great, but it does conduct electricity. So your fence would be constantly grounding out and it wouldn't work. Um, you know, there's not a lot of mistakes that people make putting them on because most people that that have them are familiar enough with them to know what to do. And that's what I, one reason I was glad to, to do this with you is I'm trying to help people bridge the gap that are not familiar with electric fences to realize that they're not something to be afraid of. Um, I, I know that, that Kathy Freeze has some of the best predator guard set up that I've ever seen, but I still like mine better. Sorry, Kathy. <laughs> We have a question in the chat uh, from Kelly. She says, what are your thoughts on solar chargers? Solar chargers will work fine. They're going to cost you a lot more money to get one that's big enough to do what, uh, what you need to do. We have a solar charger on our back pasture. Um, now, I'm not saying you'd need one this big, but it only has a joule output of maybe one joule. And that charger was $350, $400, has self-contained battery. Um, solar chargers do work. Just make sure it's rated for livestock. Uh, the hardest livestock to shock is a sheep because wool is not a good, uh, wool is a good insulator. Uh, but if it's rated for cattle, it's okay. And solar chargers have, you know, they work great. Uh, we've been using one for 15 years, but the technology has likely come, has likely gone light years since we bought ours. So just make sure you don't get one for pet containment. We're not trying to, sh we're not trying to keep your German Shepherd puppy in its pen. We're trying to keep a snake out of your purple Martin gourds. Any more questions? I know y'all got questions. Does anybody want to see a live from the gourd rack? Anything live? Courtney does. Okay, Courtney, this is where you have to start singing while I connect my headphones to, to you and Kathy Free sing a duet. Okay. <laughs> Karen thought that was funny. Yes. I have a question. We need a male yes. voice in there too. Oh, we got a question from somebody. Okay. I think that's Do you clear. have a video of yourself uh, tiptoeing around your Martin pole? 
Do I have a video tiptoeing around my Martin pole? Yeah, on that hill. Oh, no, I don't. I can get one. It, it will be greatly uh, underwhelming, I can assure you. I, it's I think a, everybody would enjoy that. Okay, I'll see what I can do, Bill. <laughs> okay, Courtney, I'm going to try to disconnect audio from this computer. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. Alrighty. So stall. Kathy's good at stalling. Y'all should be able to do that very well. All right, Kathy, give me a hand here. I'm not sure. Oh, she's eating something. <laughs> and now you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Man, I'm getting good at this technology stuff. It's like 15 seconds, not 15 minutes. Okay, now, well, let me unplug my headphones. Uh, oh, now I can't hear you. Okay. Brad, we only see your elbow, dude. I'm getting a really nice close up of his shirt. It does look clean, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him in a different box now up on the screen. This is what he loses his audio. Uh oh. <laughs> nope, can't hear you. Nope. We all can talk now. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least we're not staring at his winch. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a nice view of the shirt. Yeah. Hey, can you hear us, Brad? He's listening to his headphones. Can you hear us now? You think he knows where the mic is? On his head. <laughs> what are you saying about getting put in text? <laughs> nope. Can I, I hear you? Oh, let's I wonder what happens if I'm hmm. Maybe I need to click some shiny buttons too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try that and see if this works. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yay. I clicked the shiny button. Yeah, you had me muted. <laughs> okay. Um, excellent, says Kathy Freeze. Okay. Uh, I'm obviously on a different screen now than I was a minute ago. Look, I got a, a different cup for tonight. This one has fruit and flowers on it. No stormtroopers. <laughs> I missed the Stormtrooper Cup. Okay. Does, Does everybody anybody... know how to pin a face to the screen to make him to make it look bigger? Do we have to? You don't, you don't have to. <laughs> it sure is ugly. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> I am I am like one of the top two thousand good looking men in Alabama. Uh -huh. There's only there's only three, there's only three hundred of us here though. Oh, is that Micah? Yes, that sir. was Micah. Yeah, he just he just came. Look, dude, compared to you, I'm like a twelve. You got that right. <laughs> I'm glad Micah's a nice guy because he's about a foot taller than me. So if y'all don't know how to pin a face and want to see what Brad is looking at a little bigger, you can um, click on the three buttons on, there's a button on the uh, top of the screen of the face and it has three dots in it. You click on that and you can pin it. And and that'll make you're what a, you're seeing bigger. If you're on a phone, you just double click on my, on my picture. Okay, here is my handy dandy test it every time i walk out here my tattletale light is 
right here. Let me just show you what happens when this when this thing comes off the fence. Okay, it's off the fence. And it's going to start blinking. There it goes. See it blinking? Does everybody see the light blinking? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is looking facing my kitchen window. So about eight o'clock every night that the fence is off, my daughter says, Daddy, the electric fence is off. This is what Mr. Snake's gonna get to feel. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you yeah. can I'm sure you can hear it. That's that's no bueno to touch that. So now that I'm out here, does anybody want to see anything specific? You can see the seam. Almost touched that. You can see the seam where I glued that piece of trim board to that one. And like I said, this is all made out of PVC, so you can use regular PVC cement to make those. This Does is one of my. Sorry. Does it have to be a certain thickness at all? That depends on which on how powerful your charger is. Um, if you're buying one just to use on a Martin Gourd rack or a, a house uh, or even 10 or 12 houses, if you buy one that's one jewel output, a quarter of an inch of an insulator is probably enough. Uh, I had to go up to half inch with ours just to keep it from arcing and it still arcs when it rains sometimes with the with the dust dirt splashing up on the poles this is one of my old ones that i used alternating sizes of pipe and as you can see down here at the bottom it's bad about holding track uh weeds and stuff i don't like that one i'm gonna have to redo it so Anybody got any questions? No questions. So what's your favorite design of all the ones that you've done? Uh, the one that, that I we showed in the video that has the, well, this is one too. It's got the two pieces of, two pieces of pipe. Uh, here you can see the, the gap on one pipe. 90 degrees from the gap on the other. Totally eliminates any arcing issues. Never, ha I never have any trouble with these, with those guards like that. The ones where I have open air, I guess the best way to term it, where I have a space between the wire and the pole. I have grass get trapped back there when I mow. I have, you know, I have several times I have to clean those out. So if you have a round pole, that that's the way to go, in my opinion. Any other questions? Where's the part? I have a back because you got electrified. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear that. Part happen that you know where you're flat on your back because you got electrified electrified we want to Amy, we can't hear you very well oh sorry that's better i was just what wondering did you say? i was just wondering are we going to see you get electrified no ma'am you are not <laughs> sorry to disappoint you i think i will now this is the this is the country boy method of checking a fence. I wasn't going to do it because it is a little wet. We got probably an inch of rain today that we desperately needed. But just for you, Tammy, 
I'm going to do it. This is a seed head from Italian ryegrass, which I absolutely hate. So you have your electric wire right there and you lay the grass blade on it. Okay, my hand is a foot from that and I can already feel tingling in my fingers. So if you do, oh, if you don't, <laughs> that's a good bit of tangle right there. Uh, I'm not going to push it any further than that, but you can actually work that, that seed head towards the fence until you feel your fingers start tangling and you know your fence is working. I have a question. So you said that you could use... Um, a different shape of insulator device around your pole so you could just get like conduit that's bigger say i've got a two inch square pole i could just find a, a conduit that's big enough to go around that and put split sure. that up side absolutely and then you, you open you it up you just split it on one side is that what you're saying and you spread it apart no, and get it around no, you have to you have to split you have to split it on both sides. It's it's really okay. tough stuff. Um, okay. But with, I'm guessing that you would have to use somewhat, something close to a four inch to go around a two inch okay. square pole. I don't think it would go in three. If you did okay. that with four inch pipe, your splits would be far enough from your metal pole that you would only need one layer of pipe. The only thing I would suggest in a situation like that is buying a cap for the pipe. Sure. So if you use four inch pipe, buy a four inch cap. Okay, mm -hmm. split, cut your two inch square hole in your cap, split your cap, and then glue that to your, glue that to your, uh, the top of your guard. And Just there's no way for anything. Falling down in it. Falling down in it or coming up through it. Um, okay. Okay. I'm surprised nobody's asked me okay. what happens Thank when a bird. Oh, you're welcome. I'm surprised nobody's asked me what happens when a bird touches this. Well, they're not grounded. It is when it's sitting on the ground. I saw a mockingbird get zapped pretty good one day. Um, it didn't hurt it. Feathers are not a great conductor of electricity, uh, but. I've, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever had a purple martin touch it that was sitting on the ground. I mean, they pick up nesting material around here all the time, but I've never found a dead bird close to um, close to the electric fence guard. So, do you know how they have the four-inch wooden posts, and they they sell a uh, PVC to go over that for yep yep that's something that is it too thin maybe to use no. for something like this no no that would work fine um I I've seen those and I I was going to try to get a picture of one and I just I just didn't make it but I saw a guard that was made out of one of those a few months ago and it worked really well um I I could have done something easier on my my square poles if I had put enough thought into it but with them being four inch that take uh, you know a four by four is only three and a half a three and a half so that that took me out of uh right I couldn't use that for for, for these poles but uh, anything that's made out of plastic and it doesn't as long as you don't have a gap for the electricity to get to the steel steel or aluminum pole it really doesn't you know, eighth of an inch stick is plenty thick enough. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot as long as the material is non-conductive. So what would be the reason that you wouldn't use on that, your square pole that you kind of ripped the PVC uh, trim board and made corners out of it? 
what mm -hmm. why would you not just take a whole board of the pvc and put it up each side and then you wouldn't have any gaps underneath uh, where grasses would catch in those gaps that's a very good question and i have a very good answer because i'm a cheapskate okay and yeah i hear that stuff's expensive <laughs> those those pvc trim boards it would probably would have cost about 120 or 30 dollars to do those two poles if i'd have done Whoa, it solid God. wow that stuff's like stuff's like 30 dollars for a six foot board it's crazy wow um, hmm. All right. So, Thanks. Brad. Yes. What if you were to use like styrofoam? I uh, don't think that would work because it would hold enough moisture to conduct electricity. Oh. I'm not saying it won't work. I've never tried it. If you used a high density okay. styrofoam, like uh, the blue board stuff that you insulate buildings with, that. It, yep. it might work. I'm not going to tell you it won't, and I'm not going to tell you it will because I've never tried it. It could. It, it, it very well could. Yeah, but the uh, UV from the sun really tears that stuff up. Oh, yeah. It's not going to last too long, but um, it, it, yeah. You know, vinyl, vinyl siding from your house might work, but you'd have to stack several layers to eliminate any gaps. Uh, for electricity to get through. So I'm just going to compliment you on your weed eating because it's really easy to chew up an insulated wire with your weed eater. So we've had to use even conduit coming up out of the ground. Anything exposed is protected by the conduit. Conduit yes. puck around the insulated wire. Yes, absolutely. That's 100% correct. And that's why. I typically don't weed eat around these poles. Uh, the way I look at it, if God had intended for man to continue using weed eaters, he would not have allowed Roundup to be invented. So, <laughs> I, I round up everything. You want to do a tomato growing VST? Gourds and tomatoes, sure. Kathy, that's a tomato plant, and it's not aroma for Kathy Freeze. I don't know. It looks like a dandelion to me. No, no. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I agree, Courtney. That's a dandelion. Yep. Dandelion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is not. All right, y'all don't be shy. If you got more questions, let us know. I'm definitely not going to grab the fence. <sighs> and you don't turn that off when you're doing nest checks. I don't. I, Kathy asked me that the other day, and I, I, you know, I really don't. I, I could, and I probably should, but it really is just a temporary discomfort. I did get popped one day last year. My kids were out helping me do a nest check, and they, they laughed at me, and I don't blame them. I would have laughed at them, but uh, they make a quick disconnect that's a knife, a knife switch, if you know what a knife switch is. Yeah. And I really could put one here at behind the house, and I could flip it off and disconnect it in a very short, you know, just seconds and reconnect it, but... The problem with un, with me is I have to go down to the barn and unplug the fence. And mm -hmm. when I do that, sometimes I forget to plug it back up. So, of course, my tattletale light tells me that it's that it's off, but then I have to wait and see the tattletale light. So, and like I said, I've only got shocked one time doing it. So, it's, mm -hmm. if I'm careful, I I don't I don't get popped. So any pretty, more questions it's pretty um, pretty informative we appreciate it brad well thank you and like i said i mean if there's any other questions there are no there are no there are no stupid questions i promise 
Hey, Brad, could you uh, give us another shot of your gourd racks, please? You just had one, but. Get over here where I can get them kind of all in a, all in a row. There we go, right there. Hold still now. <laughs> oh, you're doing a, one of those screenshots. I am. You want to see his winch again? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know what that means, uh, when we started doing these virtual site tours, uh, very quickly after we opened the site, I did the first one and I had my highly trained Purple Martin named Earl that I was feeding super worms to. And then I was going to show everybody my predator guard. Well, when I walked over to show my predator guard with my phone, I lost my signal. And for about 10 minutes of airtime, they all stared at a frozen picture of my <laughs> winch. And I didn't know anything about it. I told them all about my predator guard and <laughs> told them all about everything. And then when I got back close to my pickup where my laptop was sitting, I could just hear all this laughing and carrying on that I couldn't hear on my headphones. And I'd gotten disconnected and didn't know it. So they all had a big, big time about that. So, <laughs> Hey, Brad. Yes. Can you see my gourds? No. No. Let me see if I can find you. How many Martins have you got? I have three right now. One's inside, so probably four. Yep, I see them now, Micah. But Micah, hey. That is Micah. That is down the road from my house. Maybe, what, Micah? Straight three quarters of a mile, maybe? Nah, not even that. Micah, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. This is Micah's first year. Uh, we're proud for him. He uh, a Martin landlord, so glad to see it. And glad to see another colony get started. I think he's already planning for next year. I don't think he is. I know he is. So. Yeah, uh, and you also said that I didn't need to move this one. Uh, the reason no. why. Not, the reason no, why is lost. they are going to come back to where that gourd rack was, okay. and if you move it you stand a really good chance of them abandoning the site. Okay. Um, I can get away with stuff like that after 18 years, but you can't get away with stuff like that because you're very new. Mm, just two nights into this. Yeah, yeah. You want everything to look as close to it, to what it does now at that spot across the road from your house as it does this year. Okay. Well, I know I need to put a winch system on it, so yes. I may have to get some uh, engineering from you. Sure. I mean, that, I'm not talking about, you know, you can modify the rack, but just leave it in the same spot. Okay. Uh, right now, it's on a hinge, so you have to lay it all the way on the ground, and I know that ain't right. going to be good the mess checking right. them off. So, yeah, so. No, you won't be able to do that. That's a, that's a foreign concept to most of the people on this call. They've never seen a rack that does that, but... Uh, the area where Micah and I live, I had never seen a Purple Martin house until my mother bought one when I was 18 and I put it together for her. Everybody here has Gordrax. And the vast majority of them still use natural gourds. Wow. I put up well, you guys can see where I'm standing. I'm, I'm about 30 feet from those gourd racks. At the time, I had three gourd racks there. The one that was in the center is now down at the barn. And I put up a trio castle that I modified to a 12 room, 12 enlarged compartments. And I hung, I put it right here because I still hit the concrete with the tiller when I got them through the garden. For two years in a row, I had that that uh, house there, that castle, and I had three gourds hung underneath it. I never saw a Martin land on or go in that house in two years. So Martins don't like houses on Sand Mountain in Alabama. 
Any other questions? Got dead air, dead air, dead air. <laughs> Nobody has any more questions. Kathy, Thank was you. there anything else you wanted to say about the group, the Facebook group? Who? Me? Uh, you or Kathy or uh, Tammy? Kathy, you got anything? No. <clears throat> I think Fanatics pretty well describes the group. Yes, I agree. Trying to control everybody is like herding cats over there. So just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't help that I'm like the ringleader of most of it. No, I, I, uh, Courtney, uh, I, I thought your description was very nice of the North Carolina group. So that was. Uh, I agree. I agree. Very Thank professional. You. I'm in very impressed. Very nice. I know. Very nice. <laughs> The Martins are all coming home, apparently. I don't know if y'all can see them that well, but they're swarming around. We have a, I, I hope it is, I hope it's something that carries on up through Canada, but it seems like we have a very strong SY migration this year. Um, I had the largest single day arrivals that I've ever seen. Uh, about a week ago and uh, the day that I posted about that Tony Gerritsen from Kansas had he said the same thing he said he'd never seen that many birds arrive in one day he had he had SYs roosting all over his gourd racks that night and then Bill Winger shared uh, yep. a video from South Alabama that was that same day and there were thousands of purple martin roosting at a at a uh, uh, pulp mill or something, paper mill, yes, paper mill. So I hope that there are lots and lots of SYs coming to start lots of new colonies. I've not seen any subadult males yet, but I've got three subadult females. I have yeah, three I, I females and one subadult male, Courtney. You said you have one subadult male? Larry, how about I you? Any, yeah. I haven't seen any. Was that Darren? I haven't seen any. That's why I can't tell on, about my, on my phone. Who was that? Is that Daryl? I'm full at my 12 word rack, and I've got extra stuff mail. So I'm going to send them to you guys because last year I had really bad problems with them stealing babies. Mm. They're not always fun. I, I hope I get some SYs because my colony has been down a little bit last few years. So, now, who is that talking? I can't. I can't tell. I can't that was Larry, That's just Larry Arnold. Arnold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm in Central North live? Carolina. Okay. Well, maybe you'll get a bunch. I hope. I mean, I got about 80 pairs of ASYs so far, but. How many well, times I'll send mine back, back, to the, uh, back to you or the uh, new landlord? You got plenty with 80 pair. You got plenty of Martins to draw in more. So if, they're, if yeah, they come but, through there, they're going to come see you. Well, I have 180 gourds and get about 150 or 60 of them with Martins in them, but yeah. in a few years, it's I've been good to get 100. Really? Hmm. 100 nests. Right, right. But I have a bad hawk problem. Yeah, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. Yeah. Well, Nobody else has any questions. I say we wrap this thing up, but I have enjoyed it. And Courtney, thank you for asking me to, to help with this. I, I had to do a little studying, so I would sound a little more semi-educated. 
I didn't like it, but I did it. So. Hey, Brad, say it. Say yeah. it. Say it. Say it. Incubation. No, it's it's incubating is what I have to say. <laughs> okay, everybody, everybody that can see their see the the uh, closed captioning. When I say I've got females incubating, did it do it? No, it actually said incubator. It learned. It's learned. Right. Yes. This one speaks a little bit of Southern, so. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, the other day we did, we do a VST. We've been doing them once a week. We're probably going to slow down a little bit on that, but we do it. We call them virtual site tours and we do one every week. And since I'm one of the few members on the site that had eggs, I got volunteered or voluntold uh, by no. Kathy that I was doing the, the, the nest check show people how to do nest checks so when i said the word incubating in my southern drawl it typed inky bacon on uh, on the closed captioning so i think kathy's talking about getting shirts made that say ink, inky bacon and i don't know it y'all may see it on like jeopardy one day i, I don't know who knows so I have received lots of, of ribbing over my inky bacon statement, so. But I don't care. I'm Southern and proud of it. There you go. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, our, for asking us to co-host with you. I really enjoyed yes. it. Yes. Yes, we did. We, we were excited, Courtney, from, from day one. We were like, oh, that's great. Yes, co-doing co, co it. That, that, you know, we could do any of them with a co-host or co-group that there's no reason to be exclusive well thank We're you so much it. for doing this i appreciate well, you're it. welcome you're welcome i hope it yes helps thank you very much for letting us join if uh if any of you have <laughs> questions um you know if you're trying to install one and run into a roadblock right. feel feel free to message me i'll be glad to help you any way i can it's really not scary and that's the that's the biggest reason that I wanted to do this because most people are afraid of electric fences. I've talked to numerous people. Oh, I can't. I have dogs. Well, guess what? Your dog and I. We had a neighbor's dog that tried it out, and he doesn't come over. <laughs> he, he he hiked his leg on one of my gourd racks, and I, he jumped about six feet off the ground. But he he stays in his yard. He stays in his yard, now, which is good. So. Um, but it's, it's nothing to be scared of. Yeah, no kidding. Ouch! It's it's not it's not <laughs> it's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt your grandkids. Uh, but it will. I, I'm I'm pretty safe in saying it will keep snakes and raccoons and feral cats and oh that was a good a good one uh, off your door racks and that's what it's all about. The electric fence keeps them from getting to the pole. If they can't get to the pole, they can't climb the pole. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Greg. All right, thanks, guys. Greg. And thanks, yes, everybody. Thank y'all. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. A thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.